Screams and Dreams. I'm your host, Joshua Wigan. I'm Ashley Wigan. And we're really happy to have our uh, guest on tonight. Uh, he's the host of Profiles in Eccentricity, uh, a really great podcast, super funny. And uh, tonight we're touching on a topic that I think is probably too seldom discussed in the, in the world of unexplained phenomena. One of my personal favorites since I was a kid, but yeah, never hear about it. Yeah, I think I first heard about this, uh, you know, maybe from Unsolved Mysteries or something when I was a kid, and it's always been a, a pretty fascinating to me. Uh, tonight we're going to take a little a little bit of a dive into it and uh, have, a, have a couple laughs while we're on the way. So you guys stay tuned. So we're very happy to have our guests on tonight, host of one of my personal favorite podcasts with topics ranging from Rod Serling to G.G. Allen and everything in between. It's the host of Profiles and Eccentricity, John Fahey. Welcome to Beam Screens and Dreams. How are you, man? I'm great. How are you guys? Doing really good. <laughs> Doing great. Super excited to have you here. I'm very excited to be here. So, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Profiles and Eccentricity and uh, how you got started? Uh, it was just like a thing I wanted to do for a long time. Uh, that was like a, like a serious writing project. <laughs> and then later on, it became like a big, dumbass, just talking project with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, were you it's probably initially... better off because it became that because my friend told me I was a better talker than a writer. So, <laughs> so were you initially planning on uh, uh, kind of making a profiles book, kind of a? Yeah, exactly, and like pairing it with like photography and like you know using these heavy-handed kind of like things that I think are poignant about the stories in photography alongside it. That was the original idea, and then and then re I just realized you know. If you really want to make that shit poignant, you, you really just got to tell the story in a way that shows that you feel that way about it. So the original people that were like from that were like basically, you know, Chris Burden, uh, Alexander Alakine, Carl Panzram, and uh, Matthew Weigman. Like some of the first 10, that was sure. all the original list of what was going to be in the in the writing thing. But then it ended up being me bullshitting with Aaron and Matt, and that ended up being a way better thing. Uh, and then it just took on a fucking life of its own. And now it's this huge cache data bank of dumb fucking <laughs> jokes <laughs> and shit. No, you know? It's great, man. I gotta say, uh, I can't, I can't tell you how many uh, hours I've wild away, you know, uh, at work and my day breezes past listening, uh, <laughs> listening to profiles and eccentricity. Cause I'm just laughing my ass off the whole time. And you know, just having a good time, <laughs> you know, listening to listening to you guys chat about these uh, these wild characters that just kind of it makes my day better yeah. a lot of times, man. Thank you. That was you know, like it's like I forget how much I share about <laughs> about stuff, you know. So uh, so like over over <laughs> over Christmas, I was getting a bunch of fucking messages from people <laughs> and I didn't understand what was going on <laughs> there were people that listened to the show and I completely and people are going they're going they're going Merry Christmas I'm like okay what? Oh, no. <laughs> it was like a few after another and I'm going okay you know I know there are people that listen to the show and they're going Merry Christmas saying things afterward like I'd hate to break tradition and I'm going like, what the fuck are they talking about? So this is a real and weird like, tradition. I get like five of these messages from, from different listeners. And then and then I realized last year I talked about somebody called me a f Christmas day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and I've completely forgotten that I told this story. But everybody, everybody that listens remembers and is going, oh, Merry Christmas. Oh my god. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, that was. I well, I think like, I think that's like part of the great part about like transforming it from this like writing project into this like you know into your podcast and into your like you know, I know you even have like the YouTube show, but like hmm. that people can like grab grasp onto these things that are like <laughs> more just like pieces of you instead of just yeah, like yeah. 
latching on to, like, we have plenty of, like, serial killer and wild people documentaries and books, uh-huh. but it's like, we don't, we have so few, like, regular people yeah. telling us right, about right, that. Right. I, I think yeah. that's, like, yeah, it's definitely one of the things that uh, is, like, the mm-hmm. highlight of the show is, obviously, you, uh, Aaron Pita, and Matt Brousseau have such a great friendship as well, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah, on it. brand, uh, you know, like sense of uh, uh, comedy and comedic timing between each <laughs> other that it just flows so well, you know. Yeah, you know, when you're listening to it, you you really feel like you're a part of it. And also, you know, I I, I don't see myself coming to L.A. or something not being like John. We need to go to the Teak because <laughs> that, that's that's that, you know we're gonna get freaked at the Teak. You know, that's just really gonna be something that has to happen. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, all those, all those little things that like pop into episodes that kind of just roll, roll through. Uh, you know, like Aaron being, uh, you know, three kids stacked in a trench coat. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, there's, there's so much good stuff in there alongside the, the wonderful, uh, you know, uh, stories you're telling about these characters. I mean, and yeah. I definitely see the podcast being a, a, a great avenue because some of these, some of these characters, I mean, novels in and of themselves and. You guys are actually yeah. reading through a lot of novels to, or and you know autobiographies, biographies to to bring these stories, right? Yeah, yeah, and then it happens the other way too, where like you know you kind of go deep on one, and you just you pluck out all this shit, and then like, you know, when you get really excited about it and you tell people about it, then they go like, well, that should be a screenplay, and they're like, oh, is that something I should be doing? You know, what <laughs> I mean? because like you can get really carried away with like research into these people and stuff, and um then you can kind of be you just get like obsessed for a minute you know but then that's all really fun and it's you know what makes telling the story so much fun on the air because you're usually doing it when you're like the most excited about it which is what i i tell everybody including guests if they're gonna do profiles i'm like i don't care what it is but like just do it at the moment that you're the most like crazy about a subject you know right because otherwise it's not very eccentric as a and yeah, just, like, you just kind of add your own eccentricity to it. You know? just like, <laughs> because, uh, well. now you're like an obsessed maniac. <laughs> so who's uh, who's your favorite, uh, you know, uh, eccentric that you've covered so far? Would you say if you had to pick? Oh, I can't, man. I can't. Uh, I love so much about uh, so many of them, uh, and and a lot of it was really just also the conversation. It's more that I really love the conversations I have with Matt and Aaron about it, you know, like, especially when it was something we had never really dived into as friends. You know what I mean? Like, like some of those conversations really are like, you know, the first time we had like kind of like concept art discussions was definitely the Chris Burden episode, you know, and I really love that one because that guy is kind of crazy and he's making political points and i don't know I, I really like the conversation that came out of that one that's a that's a particular favorite of mine yeah. but also so it was the first episode matthew weigman which is like right i think kind of like where i actually got aaron on the hook about what the show was going to be like and how interesting the characters we, we discussed could be you know and, and you guys kind of <laughs> you, you guys kind of go into the episode uh episode each episode kind of blind of what uh either any one of you is going to talk about as well right yeah for the most part nobody knows yeah i think that's also an aspect that i really like uh yeah. you know hearing the excitement as you know the other two guys or or you you know get excited as they're telling the story it's pretty much whoever tells the story is the only person that knows what's going on. Sure. Okay. And everyone else gets like the the background like commentator and and reaction like as you guys. Yeah. Are... Exactly. It's pure comedy. Yeah. yeah. Pure comedy yeah. past past the point of inception. Well, I've listened. I just don't know like <laughs> yeah. how you. Know, I don't. No, I there's just, one time where the like you're like process, you know? extremely like on point and like telling the story, and the rest of the time you're just like chilling and making dumb jokes. Right. <laughs> like, it's the polar opposite of responsibility where like one person is very much like, I have to tell this story. And the other two are like, just being idiots. You kind of <laughs> so kind of roping each other back in every once in a while to <laughs> back to the topic. A lot of, a lot of sidebars and a lot of, uh, a lot of fun yeah. tangents. In and there we, as well. we know that happens sometimes. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes you have to fight Chris Angel. Yeah. 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 That's and, true. And, and for those of you watching, this is the second recording of this episode because the first time I was hammered drunk. 
Yeah. And I don't remember recording that episode. <laughs> and I'm not intelligible. You can barely understand what I'm saying. So. I, I stand by that you should fight Chris Angel, though. I, yeah. I promise. I promise, John, that I wouldn't threaten to fight Chris Angel if he came back for a re-record. So <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sustain. <laughs> okay. That. So he asked, "What was like your favorite profile?" But what would you say has been like the most kind of like shocking thing that you've discovered about a person since you started doing this? I don't know a lot about really important shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's like, you know, I'm like finely tuned history. Sometimes I'm like aces, but like other bigger things, I'm like the enlightenment. I don't even really know what that is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but I was, I was fascinated just recently, um, just finding out that like at first, uh, Mussolini was totally communist you know, before flipping to fascists, like, that's just, like, the, one of the kind of things that, like, I'll come across and just be like, oh, I never fucking knew that at all. That kind of blows my mind. Right. Yeah. Like, how, yeah. Does, how do these things come to be? Yeah, like, how do they flip so fucking crazy fast, you know? Like, uh, around that, uh, that same kind of, like, dive, I was, like, you know, I was just kind of looking at bigger, bigger potential profiles, I guess. And so I was looking at Goebbels, too. And oh, yeah. Goebbels was like uh, much more defensive of socialism also. And he saw Hitler come and speak out against it. And he was like, no, 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 like, because they were still in the same party. It was still the early Nazi party. Right. And some of them were still really down with a lot of socialist thinking. And he came out way against it. And in his diaries, Goebbels wrote that it was the first time he was disillusioned with Hitler. And he was, he's, after he spoke, he was like, just still not. And then like, you know, of course it was obviously uh, a longer relationship where he was brought around to Hitler's way of thinking completely. But it's like, what if that one moment would have resonated yeah. with him, like captured it was just, him? Just things like that that you come across where you're like, oh my God, fucking, I totally, I had no fucking idea, you know? Well, yeah, it was right, it was right there in the name for him. He was like National Socialist Party. Sure, I'm here to be a socialist. That's what we're doing, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I mean, you know, it, it, it's now they're so cartoonish and like evil, but you forget that it was like a new, they were still kind of promoting it in a socialist kind of way. Like the idea was that you wouldn't be equal, but the classes would intermingle more and then therefore be forced to be folksier. Right. And, stuff. and it was like, they really had at least a pitch. It was bullshit, of course. But you kind of like you can go back in time and you can look at it and be like, oh, this is how they sold it to people. And you, you know? can you can you can look at current times and be like, oh, this is vaguely reminiscent of things. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, completely. Yeah, it's going to seem like, cartoonishly evil when it's like, yeah, you remember that time uh, America almost slipped into fascism. It was Donald Trump, who was a registered Democrat all this life before he decided to run as a Republican. And then once he was a Republican, yeah. he became a fascist. It was so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Guy has had, I mean, a, a, a multitudes of abortions, right. divorced a million times, like accused of rape a million, like I just, and then he becomes the champion of the Christian right. <laughs> and yeah. You're like, okay. literally, yeah, literally, yeah. Uh, literally a Insanity. ton of people calling him the second coming of Jesus, which I what? find amazing. So yeah. you know, I look forward to that full. Full profile in a couple uh, yeah, of years because we're not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There has to be a lot of space between. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we need to decompress first. Yeah. I was yeah. like, once it's over, nobody's going to want to hear his fucking name for a long ass time. Exactly. That's exactly. A, I was talking to Ashley earlier. I was like, you know what's really great about this is like, I don't have to read the history books about this. It's going to be my kids that have to. Yeah. I know. And, they're going to yeah. be like, can you help me with this book report, you know? And I'm like, I don't talk about those times. Uh, don't <laughs> yeah, talk, we yeah. don't speak about that, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, you are going to have to go to the library. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? So no. we did have a topic for of, of discussion for the night. That Something I, that you mentioned <laughs> was, a, was a personal favorite of yours. Yes. Do you want me to say it? Say yeah. It. Spontaneous human combustion. I love yes. it. I love it. Now, we, we we did a little bit of research on spontaneous human combustion, too, and the, the earliest case I could find is uh, pretty fascinating. Yeah? 
So it's a uh, it's one that goes back uh, to the 1400s, and it's yep. in Italy. Mm-hmm. It was an was Ita- it Italy or Ireland? It was Italy. Okay. And it was an Italian knight named uh, Polonus Forstius, who was known to be a uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a drinker. Yeah. So they're at a they're at a giant banquet hall there in Italy, uh, mm-hmm. having a bunch of wine by the ladle. By the <laughs> by the ladle full, just just out of buckets. <laughs> does, does someone serve this it is, to you? Give your own this bucket. This is as the story is told by by all accounts, <laughs> okay. uh, and that. And then they watch this guy, uh, Polonius, uh, or Polonus, uh, just like take down two ladlefuls of of the wine, okay. and then suddenly just belch flames, and then completely burst into flames. Whoa. All, all the part, all the party goers, all fine off the wine. Nothing, <laughs> nothing happened to them, uh, you know, and nothing burned other than him. He wasn't around any candles. There was nothing. He just took a big old, you know, his second ladle full of wine and just. Boom, boom, fully in flames. And yeah. that seems to be the earliest uh, account we can find of spontaneous human combustion. Well, I got this book by this guy, Larry Arnold. Um, so I heard the first couple of accounts of the spontaneous human combustion and that, and I had never heard of it before. I didn't know of it at all. And, you know, I saw the stuff about uh, this, my, my wall art in my house. Oh yeah, oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So this is, you know, the the classic uh, spontaneous human combustion scene, uh, where there is just from the knees down, this woman's legs, everything else is completely disintegrated. Um, other flammable things are, have not caught on fire. The chair and, she's sitting in visibly is like not right. on fire. Uh, and, or and they always seem to have like a. Uh, they say there's just like a, a layer of grease on the walls. Right. Come in. Uh, it, it's just insane. <laughs> um, like, is, yeah. is that picture, uh, do they have a name for that, uh, that, that, uh, whoever it was that spontaneous, uh, spontaneously it's combusted? Uh, it Conway. looks like a. Helen, Helen Conway is her name. This is 1964. Okay. That's what I was going to say. It looks like a woman's legs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Pennsylvania, nineteen November sixty four. Her name is Helen Conway, oh, um, and so that was from uh, that was a gift <laughs> from somebody that knew I was obsessed with this, and they just took the picture from the Mysteries of the Unexplained book and then blew it up for me and gave it to me as a gift. That's a perfect <laughs> gift, man. That's incredible. Honestly. You know, I think it's in. I think it's crazy that you like, especially being like involved in like learning about all like these ex you know eccentric people and like eccentric roles of like humanity that you this was like something kind of new to you um oh yeah no i didn't know about it well i i, I didn't know about it at all until well, i was what, 21 or something when i was a kid it was like the coolest thing to me like i used to love <laughs> thinking about this i'd yeah. be like people will just blow up in flames yeah. by themselves like it really is cool um to be like the, one of the reasons why I like it, you know, because like I'm like, you know, I'm always a skeptic. Do I think it's a thing? I don't know. Some people say like it's a wick effect that makes the body burn. I don't know. Right. The, the like, body fat kind of ignites. Yeah. And it's supposed to be like a long wick thing. I don't know. To me, it still seems rather unexplainable. Uh, the way it does away with bone and everything, it's just insane. Um, but. You know, in so in this book, A Blaze by Larry Arnold, where he's got like this dark sense of humor the whole time he's talking about it, he's like throws in all these puns and stuff. Oh no! And he's dropping, dude. He's dropping, I mean, mad knowledge on spontaneous human combustion and his own theories. It's like a fucking seven hundred page book. Jeez. But but he'll go and he'll be like, ah, uh, be like, ah. Uh, meanwhile, in Europe, things were heating up. <laughs> <laughs> You got like those kinds of jokes, and you're like, dude, this is not really appropriate. <laughs> dude, so we, we know it's only happened like once every like hundred years, but come on, guy. It, there's quite a there's quite a bit of uh, spontaneous uh, human combustion happening all we over the world. We had something recently, right? Or with the yeah. yeah, I was asking about that picture too because uh, it looked similar to one that I had seen. Uh, I was titled the Cinder Woman. Oh yeah. Uh, which probably is in in that book. I mean, it sounds like Larry did his research there. 
but the the Cinder Woman is a story about I think it was in the it was in the 1950s, um, oh. and all that was left was just you know the bit of a leg there. Yeah. Uh, her name was Mary Mary Reeser. So I have in my nose, but uh, oh. she she uh, spontaneously combusted. You know, it's the it's the traditional thing. So for the spontaneous human combustion, the body is always destroyed, which is a monumental feat in its own right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it takes hours, well, well, not hours, so but it takes. That's the thing is like uh, if, you, if you put a body quickly. in a crematorium, it takes yeah. temperatures of three thousand degrees plus. It's extreme yeah. heat. It takes yeah. three to four hours to completely right. destroy so, yeah, a body. Yeah, it takes hours. Like, you don't just... And it still doesn't completely break down all the bone. Exactly. Right. But spontaneous human combustion, it's like all of it's broken down, typically. Everything. Except for, like, maybe your elbows down. But, yeah, whatever's yeah. there. It's yeah. just holding... Like, the most it's random... It's like this, still. Yeah. Which is, which and, is and, the thing and, that's kind of confounding so, about it, because a house fire, you find bodies in a house fire. Right. Yeah. You know? Charred remains. I mean, shit, we even have charred remains from Pompeii. Well, I mean, yeah. those people, yeah. like, weren't necessarily on fire, but... Right. So one, one, another thing that they had with the uh, the case of the Cinder Woman was not only was her body destroyed, you know, and there's a little bit of leg left, all that was left was they, they found her skull, but her skull had shrunken mm. in this case. Her skull had shrunken, they said, to the size of a teacup. Huh. So uh, did what, they test it to make sure it was like real human skin? Oh yeah, it was. It was her. Her son was there earlier in the night, and uh, the story goes that she said, "Ah, oh, I just took some sedatives. I'm about to go to sleep." She fell asleep in her uh, her chair, sitting up. Right. Whoa. And that's why I, I thought that might be that picture you had, because it's in that you know just kind of sitting there in a chair. Everything around uh, is totally fine. Just yeah. her and the chair are burned. You know. Yeah. The building didn't even catch on fire, but uh, I think they said uh, there was like candles on uh, mm. on a mantle. The wax was gone, but the wick was still standing yeah, straight up. Yeah, unburned. So I think a lot a lot of the early cases, like you know, 1600s, you know, the shit you're talking about, like there's a lot of people uh, incinerated that fell asleep on on bales of hay. <laughs> yeah. And the hay is fine. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it's just like. Okay, well, that's just the most flammable shit ever, you know? Like, yeah, of course. This episode of Beams, Screams, and Dreams is sponsored by Beards and Brothers Barber Lounge. Has quarantine got you down? Feeling less than yourself? Visit Beards and Brothers Barber Lounge, where you can be freshened up and brought back to your true potential in a professional, quarantine-safe, and fun environment. While at Beards and Brothers, treat yourself to a hot towel facial massage, straight razor shave, and the -the top-of-the-line clove and cinnamon beard oil made from all natural ingredients by the Olive My Beard Company. The perfect gift for the bearded friends and family in your life. That's Beards and Brothers Barber Lounge, located at 2159 North Academy Boulevard, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, so, uh, from, it seems like from inception, it's always been, I mean, just this completely inexplicable fire. And uh, uh, Larry's book opens with the case of this guy who's an old guy. <laughs> it's so fucked up. <laughs> I think old people dying violently is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, man. This, this old guy is going. And like. It's a miserable fucking life, man. You know what I mean? Like, you get up in your fucking walker, and you gotta piss. Hopefully you make it to the toilet, you know? Like, and he's walking for like a 15-minute walk, you know? And then he gets all the way to the toilet, and it's like, boom! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He just explodes. He explodes. 
where like his fucking walker is like in the ceiling. <laughs> no oh, shit. Like ex- and, like an actual explosion, like combustion. Yeah, and, and his skull is in the basement. Whoa. Like it was like a violent, a violent explosion. The dude did a damn and, backflip. Like, dude, if you, dude, if your fucking, if your walker is up here and your skull's in the like, that's a fucking explosion, man. And <laughs> it's just, I mean, I mean, he was probably like, "Thank you so much." <laughs> life, dude, if you gotta piss and go for a fifteen-minute walk over it, like, yeah, that, you know, it's time. I've done does, my deed. Does what was Larry's theory about what happened there? Well, he he actually quotes the uh, he talks about how the fire department came in, and they said that oh he must have started smoking a pipe as he was seated. The ashes got on him as he took his fifteen minute walk to the take a piss, and in the meantime he just turned into a human fireball, and then in the bathroom had what napalm in his pocket or something. <laughs> Seriously, it was like and the fucking so like the fire chief. They said, like, somebody quoted up just hearing him go, spontaneous human combustion. And he just said it out loud at, at the scene. And uh, so that's how he starts the book. And you're kind of like, oh, all right, Larry, I'm in, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I like I like that the, the theory is just so loose. It's like, well, maybe a little pipe ash. That, uh, that'll do the trick, you know? Oh, no, it was really, it was really, it was one of those things where you go, like, come up for a theory of making this feasible it could be anything yeah because an old man walking to take a piss and then exploding is not something it's not feasible yeah yeah Yeah, what could you possibly have it's like i don't know did a meteor come in and strike him from space at terminal velocity it's like ah you know i I don't know there's uh mars attacks sort of situation (laughs) maybe uh just get blasted with a ray gun by an alien the the thing i like about larry is that he comes at it too with the humility of being like, I am not the fucking expert. He's going to be like, in fact, I'm going to tell you that like the most maddening thing about me exploring this subject is that I come up with most of the time, but not always. And he goes, most of the time it's alcohol influence, but not all. Most of the time it's a person alone. Most of the time there's an open flame in the room, but not always. Most of the time, you know, it's a, fucking uh somebody that has quote lost the will to live whoa <laughs> so within <laughs> with, no, 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 within yeah, like well, yeah. fuck life yeah well i mean our brains might be capable of that who the just, fuck knows just I mean, it would be awesome, the self-destruct it? switch but yeah so yeah. like does does like within the book does Larry like maybe posit a thing that's like okay so there's most of the time but is there like maybe like okay like most of the time it's alcohol or or a flame lit but is there ever like okay it's one or two or there's two and like two like, involved yeah, like no, he'll, he'll a lot that. of commonalities variables yeah. that are always yeah. present yes but there's always those others that you know you go like fuck I thought we had it nailed you know yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, and that it mostly includes the ones, you know, uh, where the people survive. Or the guy, there's a guy who just had his fucking, like, just from his elbow down blown off, you know? Whoa. Uh, his arm just that, blew up in front of him? Just... It, just, it just, yeah, his arm just fucking blew off, right? And then there's another guy where this guy was, um, <laughs> I, I really like this. <laughs> this guy is, uh, he goes to sleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> And he wakes he wakes up with like flames from his chest. Oh my god. <laughs> like, and he goes, he's like, I'm talking about from within my chest. Yeah. You know? Flames coming out. And he's like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then so he, he puts it out. And then somehow he goes back to sleep. Oh my what? god! And he survived, but he's just no, like, no, I'm he wakes with up like, again. He wakes like up again. fourth degree, yeah, like, like that's that's deeper than a that's deeper burn. than a third degree burn if it's coming from within you. Because they're like, you have scorched lungs, sir. Yeah. Like, 
That's, that's absolutely like, insane. Uh, that sounds like my dad when he fell asleep with a cigarette and it yeah. was just like flames like shooting up from behind his head. I, I read one that was kind, the 90s were wild, man. I read one that was kind of similar, and it was uh, I believe it was in Poland, and uh, it was there was just a, a guy walking through the park, and he just look he looks over and he just sees like a flame shooting out of the side of a lady, yeah. and he's like, lady. You're, you're on fire and they're like oh shit and then they, they just kind of put her out and then she's like all right i'm going to the hospital no name attributed uh to the story there in poland right. it was in the newspaper the woman chose to remain anonymous just right. to, i don't you know, like you're not allowed you don't want to be had... <laughs> you don't want to be that person i guess it's, it's embarrassing like, I would tell everyone. You're thinking about, I would tell everyone about Think about, like, little old ladies. They're always going to be like, I didn't want you to worry about me. <laughs> yeah. you know, not that there's a flame shooting out of the side of my body. <laughs> but, like, do, you think, do you think she thought she was farting? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she tried to move she's sideways. She's real gassy today as Poland. She's like, should have laid off the, <laughs> off the borscht. This jacket's oh, no. really warm. You know? But yeah, you go to your grandma's house and you're like, Grandma, what is with this gauze? And she's like, Oh, I don't really want to talk about it. Uh, uh, didn't want to worry oh, about she it. She was just on fire the other, the other day. <laughs> yeah, like, what the hell, man? I, mean, I did find another case that uh, was more recent. This is the most recent one I could find. Okay. Which is from 2010 in Ireland. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Michael Faherty. Mm hmm. Uh, so. What does he know about this? Do you know a little bit about this story? I heard about it from Larry when I emailed Larry. No kidding. Oh, so a little communication. Yeah, a little up. rapport. This story was no, pretty I hit him up. I, 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 I think I told you last time we were all drunk, but. Oh, yeah. I hit him up. I hit him up, and I was like, uh, I was like, hey, man, I read the book, you know? And I was like, <laughs> I was such a dick, dude. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, listen, man. I was like, I read your book years ago. I was like, I've been keeping my ears open. You know, we got cameras everywhere now, dude. I haven't heard about any fucking spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> and he wrote me back and he was like, there fucking has been. <laughs> he talked about this case in Ireland and I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. As long as someone's keeping their ear to the ground, you know? Which, you know, they are, like, if you look at the cases, they're kind of separated throughout years and you know uh you know throughout different countries and everything so yeah. it's not that you can't find a commonality really between like the people or you know like a, a, a location or, or something like that yeah i mean no, there's there's been at least uh like i think it's like three people that have been struck by space debris so far that we know of <laughs> So you right. know, it's like you can't. Got to be more than you that. You can't. You can't quantify a lot of a lot of things. You know, so the spontaneous yeah. com human combustion being one of them. You know, you don't really know what happens there. Well, this guy uh, Michael Fair Faherty in Ireland uh, fell asleep in his house and spontaneously combusted. Now, uh, you know, they they get the whole uh, the the coroner out there, an investigative team, and they cannot figure out what happened. The guy wasn't a smoker. The guy had a furnace in his house that was uh, deemed to not be the source. And once again, the only thing that was burned was himself and, you know, his immediate surroundings, nothing else. He didn't even need little hands or anything? I think, he, I think he left a leg also. Leg? It's always a leg, it seems like. Uh, yeah. I think it's because it, is it maybe because it's less fat on your legs. I think, like, by the time you get to the ankle, just burn. You kind of running out of starting to fizzle. Maybe it'll add a little, a little bit of fume or whatever. But yeah. I mean, it's 2010, and you know, the coroner was like, "That's spontaneous human combustion." So I mean, that's within the, in the past in the past within the past 10 years. I guess you know we're yeah. in 2021 now, but still pretty yeah, recent for a. It was 2010. 2010 as well. Yeah. But pretty that recent what, for that was what he quoted to me when he talked about it. Yeah, yeah, it's really recent. You think about modern forensic, modern forensics, and modern coroners just being like, "Yes, yeah. spontaneous human combustion." It's like they have that in their book. You know, like they're writing that as a cause. Of I want to see the death certificate where it says cool, that. Man. That's pretty fucking cool. I, I mean, these things. Uh, I mean, I don't want to die in a fire, but I would be okay with spontaneously combusting. If I am I to did, spontaneously I combust, cool. 
I want to go like the dude with but the it, walker. Yeah, it needs to yeah, go like, immediate. I don't want to like just like fizzle out. No, I don't want to no, lose no, a fucking no, arm no, no, or no. some shit. It's not as bad as, I mean, that's part of like the mercy of it, you know? That's part of what it was, like makes it like magical to me. Is I feel like... I feel like it's <laughs> magical? I feel like it's magical because I feel like it's a big mercy switch for people that are just like, I can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the people what the people that like uh d- d- just like lose a limb That's or something they're saying. just like oh just kidding never mind i wasn't serious i uh, swear to god i'm I fine was, i think about the guy who lost his arm just being like he didn't lose the will to live but he ne- didn't necessarily like that arm either <laughs> and was just like you know like what has my left arm ever fucking done for me or maybe you know? he just... It just blows off one day he's like i didn't mean it like that yeah. yeah there's people there's people that I, I i read about larry's book bro i read about their story and i was like oh my god they're so sad and then you look and like and then the only person they loved their mother died and then they exploded and i was like good for them yeah like your life already really sucked and then the only person you really loved died i was like and then you blew up i was like Thank God. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, there's no, there's no pain after that. You're you're yeah, gone. Yeah. You're good. Just sweet relief, you know, like. And you don't even have to like think about it, you no. know. Yeah. No. You don't no. have to like try to do it yourself. It just happens. I want to see like also the, uh, relevant to like crazy Nashville guy. I want to see hell? like the internet ad, like for spontaneous human combustion, but it's like. You know, it's like Dr. Kevorkian hates yes. him. Like, end your life with this one simple trick. It's an implant yeah. that's just like, you, you you buy it on eBay, you just inject it, and it's like, you don't know how long you got. Yeah. Like, could yeah. be it's two like, minutes, could be 20 years. It's actually triggered by giving up the will to live. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, I think... <laughs> People that have usually lost the will to live is my my favorite. My I feel like favorite thing. I feel like we should have seen a lot more uh, spontaneous human combustion in 2020. If, if that yeah. was the sole reason, was alcohol smoking and lost the will to live, <laughs> buddy. We're, we're losing we're losing half the millennials Look, we this don't, year we don't know yet because yeah. we're socially distancing so some of those people that have spontaneously combusted in their homes are probably not yet we found might not yet we might not have found we're them not, yet. we haven't yeah. found them yet yeah. well, the, fuck up, the fuck up thing where my mind goes and this is like this is this is like shows the level of my fucking perversion right it's like oh <laughs> <laughs> If you're sitting in a fucking shed or whatever, right? You know, the bottle of hooch. Yeah. And you gotta fucking open it. You got a fucking fire, right? And you're thinking about God, I wish I was dead. <laughs> then you must like secrete a chemical or something. Where the fire's like, oh, okay. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. I got you, boy. Grabs you. Oh, it's like, what well, really? It sounds like it's like it's like alchemy, but your body does it. It's no, like okay, exactly. all your bones, all your bones are thermite now. Your yeah. bones are thermite. Yeah. How else are your bones not left? Yeah, it's 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 just so insane. It's so it's it's just like how how the fuck is that possible? But it seems like those things are always mostly true. Not completely, not totally, but. You know, Larry, I think, is a big fucking weirdo and kind of a dork, but he has done, like, an exhaustive science on this really weird phenomena, and, like, I'm fucking... He's the authority on it to me. I'm here yeah. for it. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm and super who's here for it? I'm going <laughs> like, to get a copy of this book. Yeah. Like, also. because at the end of the day, like, what happens when Larry dies? Like, where does the He's knowledge the pass to? He is the guy. Uh, you know? He, he, he makes inappropriate jokes along the way, for sure. <laughs> like we all do so, every once so in a while. So there's a there's a chance that like the the torch might get passed to you at some point. <laughs> the, that, that's it's the, the also, torch. Oh my god! Yeah. I'll say, the torch <laughs> might get passed to you. Like Are you passed. making a joke? I'm doing a I'm doing a I'm doing a SHC joke. You doing a lair man here? Yeah. Uh, that you know, once Larry's not around, a blaze too <laughs> by John Fahey. A blaze to combustion boogaloo. Yeah, I don't know, man. 
There's, there's that'd a chance. Be dope. That'd be dope if I was the guy that was still answering emails, being like, "Well, there was that one guy in Ireland." You know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's, it's like twenty thirty five, and you're still like, "That's the last one." Still, we're waiting. He's cataloging them though, man. He's waiting. You know. So <laughs> well, every you... email I sent them after that, I was like, "Please come on my show. I'm doing it about weirdos." I don't. I'm not calling you a weirdo, but you are one. <laughs> you know, like. Was that, is it a hard no? Never replied. Never oh, replied. man. The only Bummer. time I got a reply is when I, when, I, when I questioned him on spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> we got to see if we, can, uh, if we can shoot him out some emails. Anybody oh, yeah. that watches this episode uh, or, you know, has read a blaze yeah. also needs to petition him to get him on yeah, profile and electricity. Blaze. In case spontaneous human combustion has affected you or your loved ones, we are... Yeah. In no way making light of your situation. <laughs> Just the general idea right. of it. Yeah. Is this like a mesothelioma commercial? I, I like, just feel like you have to put it out there. Like, like, if, if, if you or your loved ones have been affected yeah. by spontaneous human combustion, please contact the toll-free email address provided below. Toll-free email address. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and, I would and down laugh. here somewhere, I'll try to really include hard. Larry's email address. If I died of that, that would I would deserve it first of all. <laughs> Man, time. if we hear about that happening, <laughs> we will immediately put it on ENN. Yes, and also let it be known that I know it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll play that clip as like the last part. Yeah, over and over. It is oh. funny. I will I also. We're, we're definitely going to have to have Larry come to your funeral if you do die from it. <laughs> I know. I'm going to be, like, be like, I told you so. I'm I'll be like, you denied him, and he lost the will to live. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell him, Larry, we need a hot pun for this tombstone. Or a hot <laughs> take. Hot pun. <laughs> yes. That would Something be spicy. It is, a, it is definitely a bummer uh, that uh, he didn't want to come on, man. But maybe, you, maybe I, you can keep... I, 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 I never give up hope. Keep poking, yeah. Well, never you guys, uh, y'all, y'all had um, the creator Bill and Ted on. Chris Matheson, yeah, yeah. Chris Matheson, that's that's uh, in way in many ways much cooler than Larry. Well, it's way cooler. Dude, yeah, no, no, it's dope. I mean, all everybody is is a dream. Yeah, I'm always so grateful for like those kinds of guests that we get on the show. Uh, I I've I, I've tried to get way more ambitious guests for the show that I'll discuss one day. But uh, but I've asked some like ridiculous people to come on this show and had a back and forth about it, but it didn't happen. Um, but uh, this is really fun. Yeah, yeah man. you're you're our like awesome guest. So thank you for, <laughs> for doing this. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, this was a this was a this was a delight. I was. Uh, I don't know talking about this shit with you guys. Just right. On the... And once again, if you or any of your loved ones have been affected by spontaneous Our human combustion, please contact yeah. this toll-free email address provided here yeah. at the bottom of the screen. And yeah. contact... Please see me on all those. <laughs> contact Larry... Yeah, Larry Arnold. Larry actually, Arnold. just contact us. We want to share your story. Contact us or, yeah, or yeah, Josh yeah, yeah. first, actually. <laughs> Good night, guys. I love you. Hey, right, we love you too, man. Take it's it easy. It's been great. Thanks for coming. You guys, don't forget to check out all the links in our in our description for his podcast. Their Instagram. Our their, podcast. Their our Twitter. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and for our stuff, uh, if you have a story to share or you'd like to contact us and come on and uh, have a chat, you can email us at beamscreamdream at gmail.com. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, all the, all the socials. And uh, really hope you guys don't give up the will to live. Don't want any of you to spontaneously human combust in the future. And if you do, we want to know about it. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.